I just want to do something really fun too because I don't really know a whole lot about birds you see in the urban space but Mm -hmm. I just kind of put some down and maybe I'm going to do a this or that like you tell me which one this versus that and if I go off base look you can pull me back in All All right. right, yeah Um, and and whenever whichever your answer is tell me why Um, Cardinal versus Blue Jay (laughs) oh god that's a really tough one okay um ooh Blue Jay Blue Jay why uh because Cardinals are (laughs) Really mean, <laughs> and if you handle, if you ever have a chance to like handle them with mist netting, um, their beaks are so big. If they bite down, they it hurts extremely bad. Ooh. They're also very territorial and aggressive, so they will like um, fight their reflection a lot of times. So sometimes you'll see them kind of like knocking into a window what? or into your car mirror or anything like that. Um, so you're not feeling the car- cardinals are jerks, basically. What you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. All right, all right. All right um, pigeon versus crow. A crow. Crow, why crow? They're so smart. They're intelligent. They know yeah. how to use tools. Yeah. Um, they problem solve. Um, they will, you know, use cars in order to, like, crack open walnuts and different things. Wow. So, yeah. So They'll they're They'll throw it they're out in front smart. of the car, then the car run and, over it, and they're yep. like, good luck, car. And then they go, that yep. is smart. All right, yep. cool, cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, a song sparrow versus American Robin. Song Sparrow. Song Sparrow. <laughs> I'm Why? Not, I'm not a big Robin fan. I think uh, all the Robins, they work for the CIA. What? <laughs> <laughs> so when we see Robins, we got to be worried about being spied on? Yeah, I'm just, I'm really just kidding. So there's this campaign <laughs> that's, that's talking about like birds aren't real. Yeah. And if there was one bird that wasn't real, it would be a Robin. I think American Robins would be the one candidate that could be CIA drones because oh, man. when you see a Robin, uh-huh. there's not just one. Like if you look a little bit harder, you'll see another one. And then all of a sudden, and don't let it be fall because mm-hmm. like all of a sudden you're going to see like 10, 12. Yeah, yeah. And you're surrounded, right? Like oh you're my walking goodness. down the trail. Hey, the, they're following you. The Robins like are the ops, man. Like, I, like <laughs> yeah, listen. I'm just saying. Hey, we on to you. We on to you. Um, all right, woodpecker or hummingbird? Oh, gosh. Another hard one? Yes. Okay. Oh, God, I love woodpeckers. What hummingbirds represent is really awesome, but I'm going to stick with the woodpecker. You're going to stick with the woodpecker? Yeah. All right, why, why woodpecker? What, was, what gives it to the scale? Uh, woodpeckers are really cool. Um, they're one of my favorite groups. I love the pileated woodpecker, which is the largest that we have in mm-hmm, North America. Mm-hmm. Um, their tongues wrap around their brain in order to help them to prevent from like having a concussion and getting yeah. CTE when they... Like, man, I don't know how <laughs> they do that, but yeah. So, okay, there's a obviously there's a biological. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty cool. Just in the ways that they get food, um, like their their adaptations are pretty cool. Hummingbirds are really pretty, but we only have one here in the eastern U.S. Uh, but hummingbirds, that's that's a really tough matchup because okay, so, so hummingbirds me, can fly backwards. <laughs> oh, they can. Like, so let me do my last one. I'm gonna keep a hummingbird or like a barn swallow. Like those swallows. Ah, oh, hummingbird. Okay. Yeah. All right. I had to give a hummingbird a, a w. Another chance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hummingbirds are a little bit more magical. Like swallows are pretty common. And so that's like what makes them cool is you can see them in yeah. a lot of different places and like watching them swoop and, and twirl and stuff like that. It's like aerial acrobatics. But hummingbirds are like little green fairies. Yeah. It's like, they're, and they're so small and they're so fast. Like sometimes you get a glimpse of them and you're like, did I see a hummingbird or was that a figment of my imagination? Like, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're very... Yeah, very yeah, I love magical. it. I love it. I love it. Um, but how did you get into, like, birding specifically? And, like, just to find birding, if anybody found you online, they would see that you definitely are a birder. So, yeah. like, how did you get into that? And let us, let us know a little bit about that real quick. Sure, yeah. So, for me, um, I got into birding probably because it was... Ooh, I'm not even going to say because it was easy because that's not true. That's not true. Um, <laughs> During one of my, like my second internship, my first internship as an undergrad, mm-hmm. I was at Minnesota Valley National Wildlife um, Refuge. Minnesota. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Okay, you were yep. definitely. So from Chicago to yeah. Alabama to Minnesota. You were spreading your wings for sure. I was going. No pun intended. Okay. I mean, I had, it was the an opportunity to learn and explore the world. Like, yeah. how often do you get to get paid to right. go and, and learn about the stuff that you want to learn about? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, that, for me, that was a huge thing. Like, college opened up this huge, like, door for me. Birding opened up a whole bunch of doors for me okay. just to be able to travel and explore and get paid to, Got you. to learn. So you you applied for this program in Minnesota, 
And it was that was birding. That was a birding program. So it was through the Student Conservation Association. Okay. And I was hired as a visitor services intern. Okay. And being in Minnesota, not knowing anything about the ecology, the landscape, anything. Um, one way for me to learn about where I was and engage the visitors was through birding. So we had this huge observation window Mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. had, you know, there was a bird feeder out there. So I was just learning about the birds. Yeah. And there were folks who were there who were already super excited about it. I mean, this refuge was a migratory hotspot. And I just remember people, you know, talking about, oh, indigo bunting. Oh, you have to go see this, like, little blue bird. <laughs> Everyone comes. Like, they drive for hours to come see this little blue bird. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck are y'all talking yeah, about? You were like, a leader, why? right? You were like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> like, how could birds be that interesting, right. right? But when I was there, I was, like, 15 minutes away from the Mall of America, mm-hmm. but I was seeing bald eagles flying over my head every wow. day. I was, you know, just seeing sandhill cranes and different ducks and just— all types of wildlife mm-hmm. that was steps away from the Mall of America. Yeah, and yeah. it was it was mind blowing for me. And after that, it just kind of slowly removed the blinders a little bit, and I started noticing birds a little bit more everywhere I went. Yeah, um, but I didn't really get into birding until grad school, where I came here mm-hmm. um, and worked on a project. Um, North Carolina State University. North Carolina State University. All right, go, go with pack. Go pack. That's <laughs> go what we have in kind of. All right, got you. Um, And that's where I started really exploring the differences in bird diversity in the city. So just going into different neighborhoods and watching birds with the Triangle Bird Count Project. All right. Well, listen. All right. So let's. All right. Hold on. So birding, Mm -hmm. because honestly, I'm probably where you were at that point because you already dropped like names for birds and stuff and whatever you said. (laughs) And I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about. But you also said something that's going to bring us to the segment we do um, called, called Pass or Fail. You literally said something about it was easy, but then you caught yourself and said, no, I'm not going to say it was easy. (laughs) All right. So let me ask you this. This is our segment called Pass or Fail. And so in my mind, in my mind, I'm sure there are levels, but it does seem like bird calling or not bird calling, birding is easy. And that that kind of took my hand a little bit. So pass or fail. Person said, oh, birding. I know about birding. They download an app and they get the bird sounds and they just go on their back porch and they start playing. And it's a little wooded area. And then they're taking pictures. Like when it comes to birding is downloading an app, sitting on my back porch or going in the woods and playing that app on repeat. Does that pass or that fail when it comes to birding? So I'm going to correct you a little bit. So like you're halfway there, okay, right? Okay. You're Help halfway there. So <laughs> it's not going out and playing the bird songs from the app. Um, so I think the app you're talking about is called Merlin Bird ID. Uh-huh. And so it's a free app. You can download it. And one of the really cool things about it is that it will record the sounds around you. Okay, so, so it records. Okay. Yeah, so you can go out and sit on your porch and have the app recording, and it will pick up on the different bird songs and tell you what birds are in your backyard. So that's cool. But that's if, I, really but if cool. I'm just, like, playing stuff, that's a fail. As long as she told me I just... I failed if I'm not. I tried to give you like You a- tried to give me. <laughs> listen, I, I'm not sure if it, 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 this was hypothetical. It was yeah. Because, of course, of course you were like I know. Halfway there. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I know. I know bird ethics and stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, not really, but that's why you're here. Yeah, yeah.